Hey, what's up guys? Just gonna make a quick video on some bench testing and some couple tuning things you can try to do with the R1 ESC. I uh, used to run this thing back in late 2020, maybe early 21, and this is part of uh, the stuff that got me addicted to MPOC. Uh, I've been running a DRK for a while uh, because I'm stubborn and want to do something with that before I come back to this one. But anyway, uh, I remade a car, put this R1 in here, and it's kind of brought it back to life for me. So I figured I'd just share some stuff that I was working on uh, a while back. Uh, so one thing or one question that we used to always get was what is start power? So start power as I understand it is initial power before throttle input is taken into account. Uh, so how we can isolate this and test it uh, to try to see exactly what it's doing is pretty easy, uh, but we might have you might also see some benefit in testing this on different amounts of let's say like sauce on the ground. Uh, I think there was a guy Jason Sullivan one time months ago. He posted that he was putting some prep on on his track to uh, to emulate the the situations that would come up at a big race, and I think this was right after the. Might have been King of the Streets, uh, which that track got pretty sticky, but we just saw in, what is it, Straight Line Showdown, just how crazy sticky it could get. So shout out to him. That was good thinking for back then. Uh, so utilizing or, or being up to date on what your start power can do or how it's working, I think is a good idea. Uh, so that was a lot of yammering on for nothing, but uh, we'll, we'll start now. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so... The easiest way to isolate it is to simply come into your throttle curve and make a throttle curve of zero to zero. And I like to make sure that there's no points, you know, it's true zero to zero. We'll save that. And what that does is that isolate or that changes any throttle input that we send to the ESC and turns it to zero. Zero percent effective throttle. So if I if I pull this trigger. Even though I'm pulling it and the ESC is blinking, which you can't see, but it's recognizing it. There's, you know, there's nothing going on there. Uh, so right now, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, move it from zero. And we'll say 15%, and we'll save this. Uh, so this car is broken, unfortunately, and it doesn't even have a spur on it. So it's just the motor right now. So I'm not going to go too crazy here, but. Anyway, so we've got 15%, right? 15% start power, 0% effective throttle. Now, if I pull this trigger, you can hear the ESC or the motor trying to turn over, but 15% isn't enough to do so. So that's kind of interesting if you think about what you're setting your start power to. Is that going to get you off the line if it's not enough to spin the motor on the bench? And this is going to vary, you know, I'm sure car to car, motor to motor. I mean, who knows, my ESC, it's, it's old, it was used. Uh, maybe it's damaged, I don't know. But anyway, good way to test it. So 15% on my car in particular is not enough to turn the motor over. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, if we, we'll go ahead and kick it up to, pretty sure 25% will spin the motor. And you're going to hear me clicking on my phone. Apologize about that. It's kind of annoying, I'm, I'm sure. So 25%, we saved it. If I pull the trigger. All right, now we can hear the motor, right? So if we go and download our log, we can now see this is what the start power is doing. So it comes in a little bit soft and builds up to 4600 RPM and this is a storage charge battery so you know your your mileage may vary obviously I'd be doing this with a full battery if I was really testing it and with a functional car on the ground uh, maybe with sauce on the ground you know etc uh, so we hit 4600 RPM uh, so if we we'll just go back now and let's just put it up to 30 and see what we get yeah, 31 that's fine We'll clear that, pull the trigger. All right, so with that, I think, would we have 46, 47? So we peaked at 5,800 at this point. So 
that will kind of show you, you know, if you have your car on the ground, just how much power, start power, you'll need to even get your car to go. Because uh, like we saw, even with 15%, that wasn't enough to spin my motor unconnected to a transmission, uh, even on the bench here. Uh, so some, some things to consider. And then especially when you've got conditions of super sticky prep, uh, or even not super sticky prep, these are ways to get your car off the line quicker to cut your times down. Because uh, like I said, this is going to, I think this is the start power is just as it sounds. It takes whatever input is coming in and applies the start power before it applies your throttle power. Uh, but that's not to say that start power is equivalent to throttle percent. Uh, so for example, so we had 31% here, we saw 5,800 RPM. Uh, so if we come back and say, for example, we'll move this up to say like 10%. So I'll make it an even 110. We'll save that. And I'll go ahead and make it zero start power. We'll clear this and now we'll just see what it does. Okay, so 10% real throttle, 6600. So it almost would almost make you think maybe it's like a third, like start power might be throttle power cut into thirds, you know, something like that maybe. Uh, so 6,600 with 10% effective throttle, 0% start power. Uh, so just out of curiosity, actually let's download that. So we'll kind of look at this curve here. And now what we'll do is Actually, I guess I don't need to delete it. Uh, but let's go ahead and throw in some, say, like 40% start power. We'll see what it does. Woo! <coughs> All right, so that sounded like too much motor. <laughs> like I shouldn't be doing this. Uh, so let's see what that looks like now. Okay, so remember, we didn't change anything on the um, on the throttle, the effective throttle input, right? And we had ten, what was it, ten percent throttle and zero percent start power, and we peaked at sixty six hundred, and this is ten percent throttle with uh, what was it, forty percent start power. So very close to double, uh, which is, that's pretty, pretty interesting, right? Uh, but we can also see how the curve actually looks different as well. You know, I didn't, didn't hold in the throttle probably near as long, but I'm pretty sure that looks a little bit different. Uh, actually, that might be scaling also a little bit with the, uh, my remote coming in. Uh, but we'll not change the scale. We'll just scroll all the way back and just look at the other one real quick. So we can see just how different that looks just based on a different start power percent. And these are the, you know, I wasn't even expecting that to be honest with you, uh, but these are the different things that you can, can test uh, using throttle curve percentages and, and start power and checking things out. Uh, so that was with a little bit of throttle and some start power mixed in testing. I mean, I'm just curious, let's toss this baby down to 20% with 10% throttle and see what it looks like. So we'll go ahead and clear this, rip it. We'll download that and let's see. So 10,000 RPM. Looks about the same. Let's go back real quick and just take out all of the start power one more time. I'm sure you can hear that's much lower RPM. So 
So 20% netted 10,000 RPM, and we're down to 6,600 again with 10% throttle power. So I'm sure you can realize the, I guess, importance of understanding how start power is actually working for you and how, how big of a difference that can make off of a line if you don't know what start power is doing for your car, especially if you're mucked up and, you know, an 800 pass uh, big event or something. So these are good things to test, especially even with the car on the ground and various amounts of prep on the ground to see what you can utilize or what you can use to optimally get your car rolling uh, off the line. As we saw, some people couldn't even, literally couldn't even make it off of the line. Uh, so this is good things to check. Uh, one last thing we'll go into real quick is the ability to see how your throttle ramp is coming in. Uh, pretty much everybody uses a remote with throttle over time, uh, you know, like an M17, something like that. And we've got the, the different points that change things. And then we've got the ability, I believe, to change your throttle um, end point or something or top point to over 100, which will change how the time that it takes to go, say, zero or from start to finish uh, with your throttle input. Uh, so what we'll do with this is... Um, We'll go back and what we'll do is we'll change the throttle curve back to zero, zero. And again, I always like to double check, make sure it's a true zero to zero. We'll save that. Uh, now I've got my start power also, oh, something looks jumbled there, uh, also at zero percent. So we've got that saved and clear the log. So when I pull the trigger, right now on this remote. Now we can download this and see what, how the, how the throttle input is actually coming in. Uh, so on this particular remote, on this particular setting, which is a radio, what was it? Radio link, uh, which I just got and planning on looking into more. But anyway, uh, what I mean is, so this started at 3.4 seconds, right? And at 100, uh, 4.4 seconds. So if we know that it starts at 3.4 and it goes to 4.4 at 100%, then we know that this is a perfect 0 to 100% throttle input at one second. So if I were to say, you know, let's say track conditions are you know, it's not holding as much power, or we wanted to reduce that or change that. Uh, for example, just real quick, I'll take my radio, and we can turn that down. And again, this can help you identify what your different points are on your M17 or whatever remote you're using. So now I've changed my, my throttle input speed. I'll go ahead and clear that. And now I'll pull the trigger. Okay, so now we can download that and again, see what the throttle input looks like from the remote. So this one in particular started at three seconds, 3.0 seconds, which will make this easy. And it went all the way in at 4.5 seconds. So we know that that zero to 100 ramp came in linearly uh, over 1.5 seconds. Uh, so that's should be good info to, to keep in mind depending on how deep you're going into tuning and how technical you want to get which the CSC allows some really cool stuff that you can do uh, if you haven't checked out my other video from a while back I went into a little bit more detail about some kind of tuning things that you can fool around with also Actually, I think one of the <laughs> one of the tunes that I use might be one of the pop more popular tunes people are using on the four poles and stuff, which is kind of funny. Uh, but anyway, uh, maybe check that out if you want. And yeah, this is just some info. I'm planning on having one of the R1 or I pre-ordered an R1 four pole 
and I'm planning on going back to this ESC, so maybe I'll be making some, some more videos in the future with some kind of tips and tricks and other cool things that you can do with this, because it's, it's really a top-notch ESC, always has been. Uh, it's really cool stuff. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Hope that helps somebody. If you have any questions, I can try to help. Uh, but like I said, I haven't used this ESC since late 2020, maybe early 2021, but I don't know. I, I had some good development going on back then, so I'm excited to get back into it. Anyway, thanks for watching.